after the first year of data from JWST, we asked our subscribers to do something painful, and that was to vote for their favorite images captured by this mighty telescope over the first year of operations. And so producer Anton put together a list of the images, put them up head to head in the community tab, and you voted for the images that you thought were the best. And then at the end of each round, the top two pictures went on to the next round. And so we went with the first round of voting, then we went into some semifinals, and then we went into the finals. And in the end, you were forced to choose your favorite image taken by JWST, which is like an impossible challenge, which made it super fun. But now that the results are all in, I thought I would have a couple of my YouTube friends come drop by and uh, go through this process in real time for you. So we've got Anton Petrov and Joe Scott, who are two of the my favorite YouTubers. We cover a lot of very similar content. I know we have a very similar audience. And so if you subscribe to me, you probably already subscribed to Joe and Anton, but we've never hung out in in virtual person before. And so that was a chance to do this. Now, if you haven't already subscribed to Joe, subscribe to Anton, subscribe to my channel. And that way you'll get a chance to participate in the voting that we do every week for Space Bites to pick your favorite story. And of course, next year, I'm sure we'll do the same thing and force you to choose your favorite images from the second year of JWST. But I hope you enjoy this conversation with me, Joe Scott, Anton and the uh, as we try to predict what were the best pictures with each round of the voting. All right, here's the video. Enjoy. Anton and Joe, thank you so much for joining me to uh, to go through this process, this excruciating process. This is like saw for astronomy geeks. <laughs> yeah, but nobody has to die. No, well, no. no. In fact, we I all hope. get to learn. Nobody but has to, but. No. We might. <laughs> this is, it's not going to be that bad. It's not going to be that bad. It'll be fine. Uh, but this, like, I don't know. So, so for people who don't know, we, we put up a list of 16 images that were taken by JWST in the first year of operations. And then we pit them in a head to head match against each other. I guess it was like, it was more like a quarterfinal, semifinal, and then a final. And so the 16 candidates were narrowed down to eight, and then those were narrowed down to four, and then people chose their favorite image that was taken by JWST. And like, obviously, they're all our favorites, but but these were, and but when forced to choose, people were able to make some decisions. And now you guys have no idea the results. You don't know what what our audience thought was the best picture, right? Never heard of him. No, never. It's JWST, what is this? Um, Jimmy so, Webb, who that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, all right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go through and you're go we're going to talk a little bit about the pictures. And, uh, and then in the end, I'm going to force you guys to vote. And I promise, like, we're going to go through this first line and you're already just going to be in a world of hurt. So All right, let's go. Let's do right. this. So okay. this is like March Madness, kind of. I, I guess, is that a football? Is that, a, is that an American thing? I don't understand. <laughs> it's like if you have like a bunch of hockey players and they play each other. Uh, and just call it's it like a Stanley Cup, then. right? Yeah. Okay, it's a Stanley Cup. Yeah. It's a Stanley Listen, Cup. All right. All right. South Korea. No idea what you guys are talking about. Just <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> um, uh, so Starcraft. first, first up, <laughs> we've got a picture of a proto star, and this is was an image released by JWST. And so what you're seeing at the very heart of this is the the actual sort of the accretion disk of the planet, of the newly forming star system and its planets around it, and then these jets that are blasting out into space on both sides. And this is uh, being illuminated by this newly forming protostar. It's only about 100,000 years old. Yeah, as it is, it's a stunning picture. Okay, See? so so that tiny little gap in the very middle of the bow tie there, that's that's like the accretion disk? That's like the dust and yeah, gas? Yeah, we're seeing it edge on. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. So we're seeing, so the, and it's, you know, we know that these, these newly forming star systems have these jets that blast out in a sort of a cone shape uh -huh. from both ends, sort of due to the newly forming, really intense magnetic fields around them. Cool. Yeah. All right. So this is the first one, right? Out that was the four? first one. This is, this is the second one. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. So this is the second one. So we're in the first quarterfinal right now. Okay. And so this time around, we've got SMAX 0723. This was one of the first Galaxy clusters that was released by JWST. I think this was the one that the president helped announce. Mm, yeah. And so this is a gigantic Galaxy cluster. And what makes this picture really special is all of the gravitational lensing that you can see, all of these smears of galaxies. And what these really are is other galaxies that are billions of light years farther away than the galaxy cluster that's in the foreground, and they're being focused and twisted, and in many cases magnified thousands of times by the gravity of the foreground galaxy cluster. And it's just like every one of these is more deeply seen than the Hubble deep field. And some of them, like the one just to the right, that's the two of them. That's actually just one, right? And it's kind of being split. Yeah. Being split yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think I'm not sure. Yeah. I think that's the one that's like split. There's even three images of that one. Yeah. And, yeah. and the Macy's galaxy is somewhere here. That's the one that they recently announced as one of the farthest in existence that was named after the astronomer's daughter. Yeah. And, and that was just gives you so much warmth inside, you know, yeah. <laughs> naming after your daughter. Is that, yeah, I, I don't exactly know where it is on the image. It's but too bad it's that there. record will be broken about a thousand times, right? Yeah. So it was already broken. Like, it was already yeah, broken. Yeah, it's going to go all the way down to the list until it's not even on there anymore. But Macy's already crying. <laughs> it was nice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Poor Macy. So this is a uh, galaxy NG628. It's also known as M74. It's a spiral galaxy. And, you know, seen with JWST, it's a completely different experience than what you get with the Hubble Space Telescope. So you just get totally different um, parts of the galaxy are being revealed in this infrared light. It's able to see through the gas and dust and really reveal these pockets of star formation, which are located in the spiral arms of the galaxy. And then as you sort of stare down into the middle, uh, you can see sort of where the central core of the galaxy is. Uh, and then the, you know, the color palette, and this is, this was done by Judy Schmidt, who is a, uh, amazing image processor. She works with a lot of JWC images has done released many of the images you're all quite familiar with. I'm sure we'll see several of her work in this. And she pioneered this, what I call the Eldritch horror palette. <laughs> oh, I like it. Awesome. Yeah. Where everything just kind of looks, you know, have you ever had her? Have you ever had Judy as an interview or? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal. I got I to watch the video. Yeah. She's, she's absolutely amazing. I've seen a lot of her work. Yeah. And, you know, she really helped me understand that if like, if you want to be an astronomer, you want to be an astrophotographer, the first thing to learn how to do is to process astro, astro images. And you can work with the best, like just download stuff from Hubble or JWST, work with those images, learn to bring out all of the really faint features and really make those images pop. And then when you start taking your own pictures, you'll be able to do the best with them. Because in many cases, people have a great setup, but they can't do anything with the images. They they think they suck. But mm -hmm. a lot of it comes in how you're able to, to work with them in your image editor. I'm curious, um, I haven't seen that interview either, but did she talk about anything about like getting, getting it accurate for like scientific purposes versus instilling awe in people? Like there's got to be some kind of give there uh, between like we mm. want to make sure that all the details of s certain wavelengths are coming through or whatever, but also like you want something that the general public will look at and gasp at, you know what I mean? Well, the process of doing image processing for the general public is a little destructive to the science. Okay. So a scientist can't use this image. I mean, they can appreciate it, but the scientific data that they need is gone. What they need is they need the separate wavelengths at the different filter wheels coming from JWST. They need to see the, you know, the, this nanometer wavelength yeah. and that nanometer wavelength they need to be able to look at absorption lines and spectra and all that kind of stuff and so this process of like taking three separate wavelengths of infrared light making one red one blue one green mashing them together into into photoshop and then tweaking the colors until you get something you're happy with it's now has no value to a scientist yeah 
So it's all but artistry, it's, really. It's all artistry, but it's but it's to inspire us, yeah, to yeah. cheer on the scientists who are gathering this image because cool. they're doing all of the work behind the scenes with the underlying data to do their science, and then we get to see cool versions of it thanks to people like Judy. Yeah, cool. All right, here's the last one. <laughs> see, I, yeah, yeah. I tell you, this is going to be difficult right from right from square <laughs> one. So this is, of course, the famous pillars of creation. These are newly forming stars in the Eagle Nebula. And sort of each one of these, these fingers of the, I guess, the grasping claw in the pillars of creation. I, I never like pillars of creation. I like, I think like, you know, creepy gauntlet claw yeah. you know but um each, at the very at the very tops of these are newly forming stars that are that are blowing off enormous amounts of gas and dust and then all of the other stars in the cluster sort of to the upper left that you can't see are are blasting these stars with their oh. powerful stellar winds mm -hmm. and they're sort of blowing away this material off into space like like fog being blown away by a powerful wind and yet the stars are still kind of producing so much material it's believed that these have, have collapsed and when you sort of think back to the original hubble image of the pillars of creation these are um a lot more sort of transparent and that's because jwst is infrared and is able to see through this gas and dust and reveal more of these stars than what hubble or any other telescope could do yeah all so, right. So, th so there's something off camera, basically blasting the material back. Right. It's well, causing you can it see to a look lot like of those stars. Like I mean, they're all over there, and you can see the ones like right at the very middle. That star is blown out. This giant. Oh yeah. Okay. Cook, this giant cavity. Yeah. Because it's so big and so powerful, and so the stronger the you know the more mass of the star, the more powerful the stellar winds, the more powerful the radiation that's coming off of it, the more it's able to clear out its zone around it. Cool. And there's also the the filaments you can see right there in the middle, right in the center. Mm -hmm. Probably mag magnetic filaments, I think. Right in the center, if you look at it, that really sort of closely. light blue gray. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure if you can zoom in, but it's like this really stringy, like cheese, cheese string like material. <laughs> that's uh, that's most likely uh, uh, that's just a source of very powerful magnetic fields coming from something right there in the middle. Amazing. Most likely a baby star of some sort. Mm. All right. So okay, so what the what are the criteria for for voting here? Like, what are we? Well, just I, it's up personal to you. opinion, I mean, or uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys can. <laughs> I mean, you guys can either come to an agreement, or you guys can provide your individual opinions. You have to decide <clears throat> which of those four images deserves to make it through to the semifinal. <laughs> So, okay, you brought up a good point when you talked about Judy, uh, Joe. You said, you know, if, is, it, is it like a scientific thing or like an art thing? We have to start with that. Are we going for beauty or the <laughs> brains? <laughs> so, because if it's the brains, I, it, you already can kind of cross out a few of them, I think. Oh, oh yeah? Which? <laughs> I think quite a few. I mean, there's one that for me, like, is just an absolutely incredible image in terms of the amount of material in there, but... Uh, number two, of course, uh, the SMAX image that yeah. just shows you a tremendous amount of stuff we've never known before. But some of them are pretty, and I like pretty. <laughs> uh, you, you know, the, the fingers. I, and <laughs> I think it's, I mean, I think both are valid, right? That you are, you, what is meaningful to, meaningful to you as humanity's understanding of the universe expanding, and yeah. what is um, just aesthetically a beautiful image? both in terms of the raw data that was captured and the way that it was processed. So what do you think? Well, should we start with like just crossing out the ones we really don't like? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell me which one you really don't like. Go, go first, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so here's what's going on in my brain is like the deep field that's number two and the pillars of creation number four. <clears throat> These, I mean, I'd seen similar things before JWST came along. Now these were like better, you know, newer versions of it and everything, but I'm kind of like, well, I've kind of seen that before. Whereas like the first and third one, I'd never seen anything like that before. So though, like the third one just made me gasp the first time I saw it. So I'm leaning toward just picking that one because like I had a, an actual visceral emotional reaction to it when I first saw it. I see. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I disagree with it, but I see what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Joe, Joe, uh, so is that going to be your final answer, Joe? Third, third answer? Uh, you're going for NGC number three? 628. I do want to say Eldritch like Eldritch Horror Spiral. Yeah, so the, the first one looks like a Terrence Malick film. The third one looks like a Lovecraftian, has a Lovecraftian vibe. I'm going to go with Lovecraft for this one. Hmm. See, Bob. Mm, okay, let me let me do my own analysis here. All right, so <laughs> with number two, so Joe, I mean you're correct that we've seen something similar with Hubble. The problem is that here we've um, the actual image shows us things that were impossible to see with Hubble. That's what kind of adds to this picture, and a lot of the galaxies there are only visible in the infrared that Hubble just wasn't able to see before, mm -hmm. which is why they were able to discover some of the most distant objects there. So that's what makes this particular image impressive. However, number three, despite being very beautiful and having this Lovecraftian look to it, is actually just one of many images that was released at the same time, which is why I'm not particularly impressed by it personally. Uh, it, it's actually, it's, I think it's a series of images by, is it called? Is it the Sears catalog? No, I forgot what it's called. Uh, anyway, it's the one that's basically trying to study the evolution of galaxies. So they, they have at least 20 galaxies they've studied already in um, quite a lot of detail. They, they pretty much kind of look very similar to this. Uh, and they're trying to essentially look through the dust and see how the star formation works, how the galactic interaction works. After seeing the fifth, I kind of got bored. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm, Impressive, awesome, but let's, I, I'm just waiting for the conclusion at this point. So I would have to say three is maybe not my choice. Four is absolutely incredible. I love number four because it shows us uh, pillars of creation like we've never seen it before, showing us the details that was just impossible to see before. Number one, it's beautiful, not, not really scientifically beautiful, but just beautiful to look at. So I'm personally, I'm stuck between two and four. And... Personally, I would go for two, but four looks pretty. So if I were to choose one, I would go for two. Okay. <laughs> now this, this, this is also a little bit like Family Feud. You're not necessarily picking the right answer. You're picking what you think other people will think is the right answer. Correct. Uh, yeah. I, I guess. I mean, I guess that's, that's a good point. You're trying to see if you can predict what my audience thinks about these pictures. I mean, yes, yeah, that's the goal is to like predict what the audience is going to pick. But I, I, I think, mm. you know, I guess there's maybe two parts to it. So sure. Um, <laughs> Overcomplicating it? Yeah, well, no, I think it's fine. So, Anton, what do you think my audience chose? I think they chose two because of things yeah. like Macy's Galaxies. Yeah, things like, so I think. It's I like, I, it's like there was so many discoveries from number two that was just mind blowing. Number four. Yeah, there were some, they were not that impressive. Number three, I don't think there was anything discovered that's. I can think of that was really important. Mm. Number one was just pretty. I, so for me, number one would have been the one that I chose because it is okay. a newly formed, like I'm a, such a nerd for exoplanets and you're watching a newly forming planetary system. You're seeing the... Qu question. Yeah. Number one was <laughs> Judy Smith, right? No. no. Oh, okay. It wasn't. Okay. Three is Judy. Yeah. Number one is, okay. was, I mean, I don't know, maybe, I mean, Judy has it's in everything, so I don't know, but, but, but just like to see star formation and, and, and a, the, an accretion disc around the star just a hundred thousand years after it formed is a, is a time of sort of formation that I find really fascinating and just sort of see, I never would have expected to see this kind of sort of nebula material surrounding the, the protostar and it's, for me, it was just uh, really kind of both a, a very scientifically interesting one to me because of what you can see. So that that would be my choice. So we're, we're going to move on. Three, we can, three different, three different answers. Yeah, no, I think on. this is great. All right, so here we go. So here's the results. Oh, oh. oh we're getting the results now. Okay. Oh, yeah. so I lost. I, I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we were all wrong. <laughs> well, I think we all split hairs on every single one of them. So I, we, we technically voted for all four. <clears throat> and I, I love this. Like each time we put up these votes in, in my chat. Uh, and by the way, if you're subscribed, every time you see a news bite, a space bite, you will see the, uh, the vote come up. 
So uh, definitely make sure that you're subscribed to all of our channels. <laughs> okay. All right. See, so they, this is what this is going to feel like. Let's move on to the next group of, okay. of pictures. It's going to feel like a loss the whole time. I'm going to drink yeah. more. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys remember this picture. This is WR140, and this is a... It is the best. Yeah, this is it my is favorite a picture already. Binary star system where the star is on a very long elliptical orbit. And so when this image came out, uh, and then once again, Judy Schmidt, I mean, she keep bringing up her name, but she was one of the first people to look at the raw data on this picture and go, wait a minute, are these spiral patterns in around this star a real thing? And confirmed, yeah, it's not an image issue. It is, these are real things in space. If you could get close to the star system, you would see this. And so what's happening is you've got the star at the middle, which is blowing out these, these plumes of, of dust. And then you've got another star that's orbiting around it. And each time that star comes through this accretion disk, it sort of causes this smear into the accretion disk that causes this spiral around it. And the as the gas floats away, or as the dust floats away from the star, the star is continuing to carve paths into it, and then they're radiating outward away from the star. So the actual second star is really close in, but it's that interaction that is then sort of trapped in the dust as it sort of expands away from the from the central star. Yeah, it's a cool photo. Were they calling it the thumbprint at one point? Oh, I hadn't heard that. Yeah, I like well, that. Maybe I'm thinking of a different one, but and they perfectly line up. So you can I forget the the amount of time that it takes, but you can uh, you can just see that impact with each orbit. It's cool. Uh, eight years, right? So the two stars are, are orbiting every eight years. Mm. Yeah, it's a it's just, what it's a like picture. Tree rings. So this is Titan, Saturn's largest moon. And, you know, normally with this incredibly thick atmosphere filled with hydrocarbons, it's impossible to get any view to the surface of Titan. And it wasn't until NASA's Cassini spacecraft orbited in the Saturn system, was able to make images of Titan, and it was able to use its uh, radar system to bounce signals off the surface of Titan and be able to map features on the surface of Titan, but it wasn't seeing them. And so, but in infrared, the wavelengths of light are able to pass through this thick atmosphere. And so we were able to see the surface of Titan for kind of the first time, thanks to images from JWST. And you're seeing structures on the surface of Titan, as well as this hazy atmosphere surrounding it, all the way from Earth, thanks to JWST. This is another picture of within the solar system provided by JWST. And this is one of the images. It was sort of like a bonus image that came out when that first crop of images, we got the S-Max, we got the Carina Nebula, we got the Southern Ring Nebula, we got a bunch of these pictures. And then in the data, apparently Jupiter had also been taken about three days later. Um, but it needed, it was pretty bizarre when we first saw it, but then some people were able to work with it and clean it up. And again, thanks to the infrared capability of JWST, we're seeing beneath that highest level of the cloud tops. And you can also really see the impact of the auroras at the north and south pole of the planet. You guys just taking it in. You got no comment? Yeah. No notes? <laughs> That's Judy Smith. <laughs> That's another Judy Smith picture, yeah. yeah. That one I right. know for a fact. It's, that's actually how she went viral uh, a few months ago. So this is the first direct imaged exoplanet seen by JWST. This is HIP 65426b. And so you can see in the, in the bottom here, we've got different wavelengths of light both near cam and Miri and showing the, the little star in the picture, that's the location of the star. And because JWST is equipped with a coronagraph, which is able to block the light from the star, it's able to reveal the much fainter exoplanet that's orbiting around it. And so you can see both in the near cam image and in the Miri image, there's your planet. Cool. And that is, that is sort of the, I think that's the only, um, direct imaging that we've gotten so far. 
planet has nine times the mass of Jupiter. It's orbiting an A-type star, and it takes about 630 years to orbit at about 92 astronomical units. So it's, it's much farther than Pluto. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of planet that JWC is going to be able to directly image. Like It's not going to see other Earths, but it will see giant planets orbiting quite far away from the star where it's able to, well, there's enough separation between them that it's able to reveal the planet. All right. So, here we go. You ready? It's four. Not okay. ready, but let's go. <laughs> He's girding himself. <laughs> Prepare yourself. Yeah. <laughs> this is like back in college, ABCD. Always go with C, right? I'll go C. All right. Jupiter it is. Just all right. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, who's going to start? I just want to say, like, when they started putting out photos inside our solar system, like Titan and Jupiter, I got really excited because, like, I don't know, just the idea that, that it can see literally to the edge of the universe, but also right here in our backyard. I wish my eyes had that You could just never look at the ability. sun, moon, or the earth. Everything else is yeah. fair game. I, I remember them uh, actually trying to test how fast they can move the telescope to even track some of the objects. And they're like, okay, we can try this one now. And they were like, okay, let's go after this asteroid. Now, it's basically just testing the ability of the telescope to even track some of the faster moving objects. But... Honestly, Titan has always been my favorite object, uh, except for obviously our beautiful planet. And I mean, it, it, it's, it's an amazing image. It uncovers so much, but I'm gonna go for number one. Mm. Just because, so okay, with number one, it's actually, uh, just to correct um, some things, it, we've seen this image before. It's actually, it's pretty yes. old. However, it's never been that clear. We, yeah. Nobody actually knew that this is exactly what's happening there until relatively recently. And the, the James Webb made it pretty clear. Like you're looking at actual physical structures that we've never seen anywhere else. That to me is mind blowing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that those spherical um, concentric shapes, or I guess bubbles around the star, that, that's just mind blowing, just seeing this and realizing it's not a, some kind of a visual effect, it's not an illusion, it's a physical shape. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine seeing that up close? Mm. I, I just have no comparison to this. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm set on number one, number one. When are we gonna see like a visual version of that in, in a sci-fi movie, like a Star Trek show or something where yeah, they're like, it's just a matter you know, of see, time. That, see that off in the background, that'd be really like cool. Like you go through the actual bubbles, like woo. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, woo. Like, like, the, like the Star Trek Voyager like intro, it's like skating across the Saturn's rings, like it could kind of skate across that. I mean, do you guys get that question where people are like, oh, how close would you have to get to see a nebula the way they see it in Star Trek? And you're like, Huh, wah, wah. I got some bad news for you. <laughs> <laughs> There's no place you could ever go that you would ever see what they see in Star Trek because your your meat cameras aren't <laughs> able to store yeah. photons long enough. You, you know, we only get those images when you're recording for with a giant telescope with for hours or sometimes days at a time mm. to get those faint images of nebulosity. You just you wouldn't see it. Always crushing people's souls with... Yeah, I know. It's the worst. With science. Okay, well, if I'm right. going to vote, um, I, I do love the number one photo. Um, okay, so last time I kind of went visually. This time I'm going more on... One of the things, like, probably the thing I was most excited about with JWST was being able to directly image exoplanets. So when they actually were able to do it, that was like a, a big jump up and down moment for me. So I'm going to pick number four for this one. I 100% agree with you. Uh like up until this point, all of the images of exo, all the knowledge that we have of exoplanets, of the 5,000 plus exoplanets, is is because of the radio velocity, it's radio right. velocity method, it's because of the transit method, it's because of microlensing. But we now have like maybe 20 examples of planets that have been directly observed. And, and we can only see the planets because they perfectly line up with the star and, and our perspective when we can measure the radio velocity in the transit method. But when you direct image, you can see them from any angle. You can see them face on. You can see them above and below the plant, the star. And if we can get that next generation of telescopes, that's what's going to see the rest. All of them is, is these next generation telescopes, you know, the one with the star shade and the coronagraphs. And, oh, and yeah. it's going to be, then we'll see the planets. And this is that sort of vision of the future. So I totally agree with you, Joe. That's the one oh, I would have picked. That's my vote. 
So Let's see how we did. Let's see. Yeah, super wrong. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Fine. I know how yeah. your people are now. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Uh, wow. So close. This so is close. surprising. I mean, so, that's yeah. a cool picture of Jupiter, but I really would have. I wouldn't yeah. expected it to win. Well, you have to remember, this is still like artistic image of Jupiter. But people, Smith, right? people were coming to it exactly the same way you are. Some people okay. were approaching it scientifically. Some people approaching it emotionally. Some mm -hmm. people just thinking of it aesthetically. We, you know, we didn't ask people to get that complicated. You just have like, to get complicated. You know, <laughs> no, we do. No, so this, like, well, this is what I love. I love it when people tell me, like, I can't, you know, is there an all of the above? I can't choose. And I'm like choose <laughs> you must choose like that's what makes this tough is that you have to choose even though you don't want to choose well and i do All like right. that there's like various different angles that you can approach it and and get various different uh emotions or whatever yeah. out of it. yeah different people get different things out of these pictures <clears throat> and i think that's wonderful all right this are you, are you emotionally exhausted yet because we're halfway through <laughs> i'm sweating <laughs> Make us I know, feel like I know. Losers. It's rough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is uh, this is a galaxy, but it's a pretty special galaxy. So this is called ARP 220. It's one of the largest galaxies in sort of nearby realm. And this is actually two galaxies smashing into each other. And this galaxy is visible in, you know, you can see it in, in other telescopes, but in the infrared, it's much, much brighter. It's a hundred times brighter than the Milky Way would be in the same wavelengths. And the reason is because you've got two galaxies actually smashing into each other. And this is causing all of this gas and dust in the two galaxies to combine and lead to enormous amounts of, of star formation. And the sort of the final form of this is one of these giant elliptical galaxies like like M87. And that's the future of our galaxy that we're going to crash into Andromeda in some number of billion years. And we'll have this period where the combined Andromeda and Milky Way look like this, then they fade away into this giant blob of, of red stars. And what's incredible in this image is that that central region is so bright that it's causing the diffraction spikes from a galaxy. Mm. That's how bright this this object is. So this is our future. This is our future. Yep. Milk Dromeda. The final form. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Carina Nebula. And this was another image oh, that was released as part of that initial uh, release a little over a year ago. And mm -hmm. what's incredible, you know, again, similar to the Pillars of Creation, you've got all this gas and dust that's being... Uh, produced by these young stars and then you've got the stars at the top end of the of this region have cleared out the gas and dust and now with their combined radiation pressure they're like sweeping away like a like imagine sort of like a leaf blower that is pushing <laughs> away all of the gas and dust off of the remaining stars and in many cases this is what ends the period like that the, the stars in the cluster work together to wrap up planetary formation in their collective nebulae because these enormous stellar winds are pushing away all of the remaining material that would start new stars from forming new planets from forming and that sort of puts the end to it and you're seeing this halfway done and some of the most massive stars in the milky way are located in this galaxy famous one eta Carina in this region um you're seeing so many stars. This is one of the most active star forming places in the entire Milky Way. So this is Ro Ophiuchi. Uh, and this is, a, this is actually a very famous image. Um, it's a very close to us. So it's the opposite. The Carina Nebula is gigantic, but far away. And Ro Ophiuchi, this is the closest star forming region that we have to Earth. Hmm. It's only about 390 light years away. And you are, again, seeing gas and dust and a few bright stars that are starting to clear out the material. And it's, it's a fairly famous, like amateur astronomers take pictures of this all the time because it's quite beautiful to see. It looks like this sort of weird multicolored, almost Christmas light object in the Milky Way that people have taken pictures of. And yet, obviously, JWST directs at it and we get features like this. It's amazing. It's pretty awesome. And those deep reds. Yeah. And sort of like, you know, the different th structures that you're seeing 
are different kinds of material in the nebula. But I love that, you know, again, these cavities that you're seeing, like right just above the H yeah, here, yeah. you're seeing this cavity open up. You can imagine it's like this three-dimensional yeah. sphere where the star is blowing away this material and clearing it out. And and that other star a little to the above it is contributing. And together, they're just going to keep pushing this material away until, until there's no more nebula left. It, it looks like an oyster with a <laughs> star as a pearl. Yeah. Seventh Quintet, and this is another one of those images that was released as part of that first release. These are multiple galaxies. You can't see the entire part of the quintet in this in this image, but there's a whole bunch of galaxies that are interacting, tearing at each other with their gravity, pulling apart these tidal tails and causing regions of star formation in the different galaxies. And it's you know it's been known for hundreds of years and each new observatory turns on it. And, you know, I've taken pictures of it in my own telescope. It's a, you know, it's the kind of thing that's accessible to an amateur astronomer, but boy, you bring JWST to this project and nothing really stands. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Tough choice. Tough choice. Uh, Anton went first last time. Joe, you've, you've got to put yourself out there. Oh, I gotta go first. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, just real quick, like that. That Stevens or Steph is it? Stefan? Stefan's quintet. Stefan's quintet. Stephen, yeah. Sorry. Uh, when I see like the two that are like right next to each other, all I can think is like, imagine being on a planet and having a galaxy like that bright in your sky. So, do you, do you think it would be remember bright in the that sky conversation or? that we had before about how nebula don't look that way? Yeah, galaxies don't look that way either. Um, but you see all the stars, right? Well, you're in the middle of the Milky Way right now. You couldn't be closer to the Milky Way. True. How does it look from your backyard? Okay, fair enough. <laughs> but I always right? assume it's because of all the gas and dust in between. No, us like and the you just like you can if you could see Andromeda. Andromeda is like nine times bigger than the full moon. If you could actually see it, mm. how it looks in with a three minute exposure on a small telescope, it would be this giant, beautiful, grand spiral in the sky, but you have to, you can see it as like a faint little puff if you know where to look and you've got really nice dark skies. And so unfortunately, all of these things don't look great until you record photons for minutes or hours of time. The ones that would look great are the clusters. So, you know, the great globular cluster in Hercules, those would look phenomenal as you got closer because they are, you know, they're gigantic and they're yeah, okay. closely packed group of stars. But no, unfortunately, you know, people always say like, as Andromeda gets closer and closer, we get this point where it's just this giant spiral above us. And like, nope, like you need dark skies, long exposure, and then you'll see it. But until mm -hmm. then, it'll just look like another Milky Way, but in a different spot. And if you Fine. have trouble seeing the Milky Way. Yeah, I know. I know. I always crush feel my like dreams. I just rain. I know. I crush sci-fi Christmas every time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I got to vote first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I'll go with three actually. Ooh, uh, interesting. No, I I like the the three dimensionalness of it. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's like it's like a little pocket. It's, a, it's like it's like you get a little star in your pocket, you know. <laughs> yep. I'm actually trying to find out on Google what did it look like before James Webb. I, all the images I have here are basically the recent images. <laughs> They, they must have. They must have all like <laughs> just disappeared. Disappeared. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it looks gorgeous, though. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, if you search for like Rho Ophiuchus amateur astrophotography, ah, good maybe point. minus yeah. JWST, maybe you'll get it <laughs> in your Google. I also but like, like the, I said, it. Looks the like of, this kind of Christmas tree lights. Yeah, in, like the the purple color yeah, yeah, yeah. of the the lights behind it. Yeah. The, because the I'm lights. sure most of this most of this must be only visible in the infrared. So, in the in the optical light, it probably looks like a bird. It, it looks beautiful in optical, just different. Oh, does it? Yeah. Does it? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Oh yeah, yeah. I found it. Okay, cool. Wow. See what I mean? It, it does. It does look beautiful. Yeah. 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 And I and mean, this is one that I've never taken yeah. a picture of it, but I you know a lot of you know, almost every amateur astrophotographer takes a shot of this region, a lot of wide field stuff. So people will be out taking a picture of the Milky Way. And when the time is the right time of the year, this is one of the really bright features that's quite visible in the near the core of the galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, all right. 
So, so Joe, you, 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 so Joe chose. So Anton, number three for sure, right? Final answer for me, yeah. Okay. So, uh, hmm, quite a lot of choices actually. I mean, honestly, number three is impressive visually, but not scientifically. And number four is impressive scientifically. Maybe not visually. <laughs> I, I mean, I like it, but I just, I don't like it enough. I'm, I'm going to go for number two. I think number two, knowing what I think people would think, I think it's number two. I'm going to go for audience this time. I'm going to like, Whoa, I'm going to okay. get in their heads. I, I agree with you that the number two is the best, is the best picture. Just because, okay, Korean Nebula is really famous. It's, it's like you always hear about it. You always see the pictures, but yeah. seeing this, the mind is just, your yeah. mind is blown instantly. And it's just, just when you think about that, that sweeping wind of all of these, like, like that just sort of fires my imagination. Mm. And there's like these, the cliffs of insanity, right? At the edge where and all it, of this it, material is being piled up by these stars. It is one of the biggest nebula near us. And mm -hmm. it's just seeing it as this really kind of opens up your imagination to yeah. so many things. There's yeah. just no, I mean, to me at least, that's, that's just a winner right there. Okay. Okay. There, yeah. there we go. Finally. A win. I, two I will, two well, winners. When they announced that photo, or when they, when they released that photo, I was just like, that's going to be on everybody's like wallpaper. Yeah, on their, pretty on their much. Computers, it was, like, yeah. And I believe that was the, the, the article that we had on University. It was, here's your new wallpaper. <laughs> yeah. No, it's perfect. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Back to the solar system. So awesome. we've got image. Neptune. And, you know, we're seeing features on the surface of Neptune that have not been seen since the Voyager spacecraft flew by in 1989. You're seeing the clouds, you're seeing the rings. And then, of course, that really bright star at the top is not a star at all. That is Triton, which is the largest moon of, of Neptune that orbits uh, in the opposite direction from the rest of the moons in the solar system. Uh, it When Voyager went past it, it saw... Uh, geysers coming out of the of the world. We have to go back to Neptune, <laughs> is what I'm saying. And hopefully, this will whet everyone's appetite and help provide funding for uh, for that mission. Hasn't Neptune only orbited once since we first discovered it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it has. Mm. Yeah, it's like 170 160 something years. years. Yeah, 160, wow. I believe. The classic Orion Nebula, and this is one of the objects that you can see, like in a, in a small pair of binoculars, you can see it. You can see it in a small telescope. It's like a weird fuzzy bit right underneath Orion's belt, his scabbard. Uh, and of course, like there's too much going on. Like it's too bright. There's too much going on. So this is just one little chunk of the Orion Nebula. And yet you are seeing features in this nebula that astronomers have never been able to see. And like... You know, over to the left there, where you've got just these sort of willowing creases of almost like fabric of of material that's being pushed around by the stars. I just, I love this picture, hmm. but it's a tricky one to get because, like, even in in an am like amateur astronomers who are you know watching this or astrophotographers know this is one of the trickiest objects to image in your own telescope because the central part of the nebula has these really bright stars called the trapezium and they are so bright they just completely overexpose the rest of the image and yet a lot of the really faint structure is around it and it takes a very long exposure and so it's really hard mm -hmm. to both get a short and long exposure to show this image off and so a lot of people have to resort to a bunch of tricks where you you do the the central core in a real, with a really short exposure and then you do a much longer exposure for the rest of it it's a very challenging object to image even though it's one of the closest and brightest things that we can see cool. <laughs> I, I don't think this was fair that that we put uranus head to head with neptune but here we mm. are um and so again in a much you know, it's much closer, it's brighter. And so we're seeing this world in even more detail. You're seeing the, the, the rings, these dusty rings they are very different from Saturn's rings. They're not ice in the way that Saturn's rings are. They're, they're formed of, of dust crunched up dark moons or maybe Kuiper belt objects. Um, and you can see some of the, 
clouds and and bands on the planet. It's a it's an amazing picture. And it's tilted sideways. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's it is actually tilted sideways. I'm sure they yeah. rotated the yeah. you know, image to make it work. And then another galaxy, uh, the Cartwheel Galaxy, which is which is an image that you can see in a small telescope, but you know, not like this. And and like over on the right hand side, look at that little pinwheel. Just <laughs> you know, another amazing galaxy just there. And every single one of those little dots in the background is another galaxy. Just photo bombing. Yeah, seen at different times of the universe. There are galaxies inside that galaxy. You can see them shining through. And those redder ones are the more the more like further away, deeper. The redder it is, yeah, the farther yeah. away the galaxy is. The more its light has been redshifted. That's cool. All right, choose. This Anton, your turn this time. Well, this one is hard. Okay. So I mean, <laughs> just personal, like instant opinion here. Number one, it, and it just because it's Neptune, we haven't been in so long. You get to see so much in this image, and you get to see Triton as a bright star. Just <clears throat> by itself, that's already quite incredible. Um, Uranus is also a pretty good choice here because you get to see the rings. We've never seen them this way. I think. I think this is the first time we've actually seen such a beautiful structure around it. But Neptune, it's farther, it's more mysterious. It has clouds that we don't know much about. Oh, it's actually, it reminds me of the recent study that they started to discover that the clouds are disappearing and nobody knows why. And you can actually still see the clouds in the image there. So I wonder if it was taken right before they finally mm -hmm. disappeared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're going to take pictures of these each year and track changes the way they do with Hubble. So, yeah, well, I'm, I'm just super, like right now I'm all Neptune just because I'm, I'm so <laughs> invested in it emotionally. I've been reading so much about it. Uh, Uranus, I mean, it's great. It's a lot of, you know, it's fun. It's jokes and it's sideways. <laughs> it's uh, Uranus is Uranus. It's always going to be there. But um, and then the other two images. So, okay, number two. Orion is cool, but I don't think that's the best image of the Orion I've seen, to be honest. I've yep. seen better. So I'm not going to go for number two. Number four is a beautiful image, but I feel like there's something missing in it. Something is just, I, I wish there was more. I mean, I think it's not, a, I mean, it's not the Judy Schmidt treatment, right? I don't think yeah, she had a hand Judy. in this. <laughs> I know. No, and, yeah, Judy. And also, it, it's, it, it's just the fact that, I mean... It's another galaxy, you know, we've seen so many. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not that. It's just, um, it's not perfect. There's something missing. I can't, I can't put my finger on it. Uh, but number one though, like once I saw this image when it just came out, it was a mind blower just right there. <laughs> just, just see Neptune, the most distant planet um, with its moon on top of that. And I think there's, they, they actually have like seven moons, I believe. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of moons in that image. Yeah. Not all of them, but just most of them, they're visible in the image. Yeah, just there's no there's no option here. Just number one. Final answer. <laughs> Joe, I think I'm going to agree. Actually, I think I'm going to go with one too. Um, the 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 Uranus photo is beautiful. It's a very close second. Um, when when the, Neb, the uh, when the Neptune one first came out, <clears throat> I was like, oh, that's going to be my choice, and uh, and I, I totally agree with what Anton was saying there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go with number one too. I'm going to break and I'm going to go with the Uranus picture. I, I did a video. Well, actually, when I presented this picture, I was careful to say Uranus differently each time I said the word. <laughs> so I said it like six different ways. And and so because everyone always either giggles or laughs or complains yeah. that I'm saying it wrong. And so I covered all my bases. But I mean, the Uranus picture is the Neptune picture, but it's better. And so and so it's it's not... Like I get, like Neptune is better and I agree with you and we need to go back and we need to go see Triton and we need to send a lander and we need to to do all this kind of stuff. But that's, for me, it's the picture. And in this case, the picture is just a much better image of of Uranus than than. Did we ever find out Neptune. what that tiny spot is? Because I remember seeing it and I was like, oh, I'm sure it's someone will mention it at some point. 
the spot there's on a, Uranus? Right in the middle. Yeah, right in the middle of your of the, yeah. Um no. <laughs> I'm trying so hard. Yeah, right in the middle. It, like right it's, like the, it's just one the, o'clock the, in the morning. Whole, like the middle of Uranus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right next to the hole. Just never right. stops to entertain people. All right, here we go. Because I'm just curious what there was. It, I, oh, ouch, that hurts. <laughs> Try better next time. Okay. That's a close one. It's no, surprising. I, I, I wouldn't it, have I expected so many people vote yeah. for the cartwheel. Uh, and I mean, that was, that was our, yeah. It's actually surprising that did, so many people did choose the cartwheel, but yep. it's a beautiful image. So you've now had a chance to see all the images. So now we're going to go through a bit more of a, a rapid fire where you're going to pit them against each other and and decide. So remember, we got the Pillars of Creation, WR140, Roofuki, and Uranus. Uh, Joe, why don't you go first? Is this hard yet? <laughs> <clears throat> Wait, why, why is it semifinal one? Because we have a semifinal two. We've gone through uh, we have more 16 images. images. We I chose... F- okay, yeah, so it was the top two from each one moved on. I'm already confused. But <laughs> it's the story of my life. Um, I'm going to go with number two on this one. I Me just too. I just love that picture. I, yeah. That's just something that I had never seen before. Hmm. Did you uh, did you not already give your answer, Anton? I did. No, yeah, I, I, you was, guys are I was thinking both? number one, maybe, but no, number two. I don't, uh, okay, no, no, it was number one. You can you can change your vote, change your vote. Yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> we stick together. <laughs> oh, who's first? Me? I think it's your turn. Yep. So it's between one and two. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I'm going to go for the everyone's uh, favorite screensaver. I mean, <laughs> what are, you know what I mean. <laughs> Number two. Number two. Joe? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that one. Yeah. You're going with the Korean Nebula as well? Yeah. Yeah, I would probably have chosen the same thing. But it's wrong. Would it have. Is. Meaning it didn't. Oh. I mean, I know oh. the answer. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Now that that's actually really surprising. That's a pretty even split, though. Yeah. In those percentages. Interesting. All right. So huh. based on on all those votes, we're into the final. So Uranus, Pillars of Creation, NGC six twenty eight, and the Carina Nebula. So this is it. This is for all the marbles. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay, so this is the ultimate GWT This is the final. Image. So this is the final decision. Which of these images did our my audience choose as their favorite image from JWST's first year of operations? And like we've already got like the, I can't wait to do this next year because of the amazing pictures have already come out. The Ring Nebula, um, the Tarantula Nebula. It goes on and on. But yeah. <laughs> and in this case, so yeah, I should I guess I should have made it clear that, that the the top two winners of each of the of the rounds was was making it through to the next round. And in this case, we're down to just choosing okay. one. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm still gonna say no to three. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know why. You uh just like happiness. I get it. Wonderful I people. love it, but it's just it, there's so many similar to it. I've seen so many. Yeah, that's like <laughs> that's like saying I like I don't like the Seven Samurai because there's so many movies about. There's so many pe- other samurai. There's so many other movies where people <laughs> gather up a bunch of people and save a town. It's been done. I know what you're saying, but still, uh, this is Didn't, tough. Like, huh? When you saw that galaxy, you'd never <clears throat> seen anything like it, right? When I've seen this, because it the first time I saw it, I'm like. Okay, that's cool. What am I looking at? Yep. And then I realized what I look, was looking at, and I was like, okay, it makes sense. And because of that, I wasn't impressed yep. <laughs> because it made sense. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but with like, okay, with images number like number two, right? You look at it and you're like, I knew this existed. I knew what's in it. But what's being shown to us now is just absolutely mind blowing. But isn't it like just a higher resolution version of an image that you'd already seen? No. Okay, with those magnetic fields, I nobody knew they were there. 
the sure. tiny tiny streaks the cheese cheese streaks uh they they were, i mean it was implied maybe by some studies but now we visually see it and it's just like whoa this is cool so magnetic fields you know uh so number two for me is definitely one of the contenders uranus i think people at this point are voting just because it's funny <laughs> but it's a good it's a picture cool, it's a good picture but like neptune was better <laughs> uh Neptune is just a better planet, but I don't think the picture was better. Yeah, you're right. You're right. The picture here is much more high quality for sure. Yeah. And you get to see the more detail for sure. Yeah. And then what do like, what you got? They're, they're bluey green with rings. Yeah. Uh, and then we have number four, Korean Nebula. That's just, that's just iconic by itself. And that one doesn't, didn't feel like, to me, didn't feel like a high resolution version of an image that I'd already seen. Like there is a, an image of the Carina Nebula and you can absolutely see it and you can see the change. But I think we were less familiar with the Hubble version of that nebula. And so it just isn't yeah. etched in our brains in the way that, that the pillars of creation were. Okay, I'm going to break the trend this time and go for the meme. I'm going to go for number one. <laughs> I think it's number one. Doe. Uh, go ahead. It's up to no, you. No, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm number one. Anton okay. said one. Um, I'm going to go super basic and say two. You like I'm your high resolution like, version of, of images. Zoom in uh, and enhance. It is my favorite, honestly. It is my favorite, for sure. It's just gorgeous. Yeah. Well, then just so go with it. Just on. vote with it. It's okay. No, I want to win this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I haven't gotten any right so far yet, so I, I'm, I've got nothing to lose here. I'll just go with the, the most obvious one, I think. Yeah. For me, it would be the I got to go to bed soon, so I got to win this. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Korean Nebula is definitely up yeah. there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, I know, don't make us choose, right? Exactly. They're all, oh. good, they're all good Star Boys. Why? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Wow. So... The one that I kept dissing the most. Yeah, is the one that the audience <laughs> loved the most. I'm so sorry. My apologies. <laughs> I hope you take this newfound knowledge and humility back to you. <laughs> yeah, don't don't unsubscribe. He, he's okay. He's still one of us. He appreciates it. I mean, he's he's seen a lot of them now, but he still he still likes it. But I, I'm just genuinely curious why. Like to me. I know my reasons why I wouldn't choose it, but I'm just curious why they would choose it. What is it in that El Eldritch-like formation? <laughs> well, tell us in the comments I, below what you, yeah. what you felt. I'm just curious because it's, it is a beautiful image. Yeah. Unnerving to some extent. <laughs> so I just want to take a second now and just talk to you guys about like how it felt <clears throat> to, to be reporting on JWST for the year and sort of what this has meant to you as as science communicators uh joe you did a one year summary of everything yeah. that had been found uh you know how you feel well there's a lot that i left out of that obviously uh it was just kind of like hey these are the things that i think are cool you know um i just you know i i have I, 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 we've all been doing this for many years at this point the whole youtubing science thing right and and so like the the build up to to the web going up and just like all the delays and it just was all the hype around it and then when it finally lifted off the pad and it's just like it was like three months of just this base level anxiety like following every single step of the way because like any one tiny thing could go wrong and it all goes up in flames you know and and the fact that it actually worked and it's actually producing the, these these amazing images and stuff like that. Uh, when you say emotionally, how did it affect you? Like that, that's what got me. It was like, it's, it, it actually worked and we're doing this amazing thing. And it's, it's, it's working better. I think than they even thought oh, it yeah. would really in terms Much of like longevity and stuff. Yeah. And the orbit has, is a lot sort of better than they thought it was going to mm -hmm. be. And so they think it could last 25 years. So, you know, we'll, we'll have to do this every year for 25 years. <laughs> 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 and Tom, what about you? I mean, you've been reporting. Just watch us get grayer and grayer over the years uh, <laughs> on on the new discoveries coming out from this telescope. Uh, I mean, honestly, it, it it has been a big journey. It's just, I mean, just starting from the fact that um, 
I wasn't really sure what's going to happen to it at first. So, you know, it got stuck here, it got stuck there. Now it's stuck in the Panama Canal. Now it's, oh, we don't know if it's going to get <laughs> oh, launched. God, I forgot about that. Uh, it, and at, at that point, I was like, okay, well, maybe I can just wait and not say anything for a while and see how it goes. And then suddenly, as soon as it's launched, everything just goes according to plan. It, it, you know, the launch is beautiful. The, um, the amount of fuel they saved is way more than anyone expected. The first images are absolutely mind blowing. Everything just seems to be just way better than any, anyone could ever have even imagined. And at that point, I, I figured, okay, well, I'm just going to go all in, start making videos about this pretty much weekly. I, I think at some point I was making videos about all major discoveries. I, I stopped uh, at this point. Um, and it was just an enlightening experience, discovering things that I thought I knew, but didn't really understand maybe that well, or discovering things that, like you said, you know, uh, certain nebula that would have certain things in them that you kind of thought were there, but were not sure about, but now you can clearly see it, that it's there. Uh, it, was, it was just a humbling experience, just learning as you discover these new studies, as you see these new images, as you kind of read new, um, new research papers coming out at this point, I think weekly now. Um, and then hearing stories like, you know, the Macy's galaxy. So this guy just named his, uh, uh, the, the discovery after his daughter, heartwarming, beautiful, and turned out to be one of the most distant galaxies we've ever discovered. So I feel like in, in maybe five, 10 years from now, we're going to look back at this and, and just think that it was supposed to happen, it meant to happen, and it's going to transition us into a completely new stage of understanding about you know, everything about the universe. We're gonna see things that we've never imagined. We're, gonna, we're going to discover things that we never thought were possible. Uh, and even now, you know, like you hear about, uh, oh, this galaxy is not supposed to be like this. Why is it like this? Oh, it turns out that maybe this is what is happening here. Uh, or seeing stars like Arendel you know, seeing stars for the first time that are at the most distant we could ever see them, just um, detecting them with infrared frequencies. Everything so far has been just absolutely overwhelmingly mind blowing. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, I, I can only hope that it doesn't break. And let's hope nothing serious happens in the next few years. And let's hope that uh, all of the things we hear about, you know, micrometeorites and maybe possible uh, instrument issues are not going to be too serious because we know that it's, there's no way to fix them. At this, uh, uh, just no way to reach the telescope. So, yeah, let's, let's hope that in five years from now on, we can come back and do a five year review of this mm. and possibly choose our best images. Sounds good. Uh, well, this was a lot of fun, and so thank you both of you for for doing this. I know you've uh, you guys have been doing a lot of reporting on this and a lot of other really interesting stories, and it was fun to sort of go through and see the results of these of these votes. Thanks to everyone, the thousands of people who contributed to each one of these rounds and voted. And I know that, you know, the agony that was on our faces, you all had to go through as you had to choose with each round and as we worked our way to the end. So uh, thanks everyone, all the subscribers on my channel who were able to contribute to that. And I want to give a huge shout out to Anton Posnikoff, the other Anton, uh, who is the <laughs> a producer and editor on, on my channel. He went through and gathered all these images. He ran the the votes on the channel. He put together this presentation so that we were able to to look at the images, be doing a lot of the sort of the graphics and the thumbnail work, and has really been a real mad genius behind the scenes. And I definitely wouldn't be able to create content to the level that I have without his help. So thanks, Anton. Uh, other Anton. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and speaking of Anton's, uh, Anton, if people want to follow your work, of course, they already subscribe to your channel. But if they don't, um, where can they find out more? They can find out more on, um, well, are we going to have links or? Hey, we're going to have a link. Are, sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The link in the description. I hear you're a YouTuber, Anton. <laughs> Tell us about that. <laughs> uh, oh, in case this is like a podcast on a different platform. What if a person has never heard of you before? Yeah. So you can find my uh, videos that are usually produced daily on YouTube. Uh, and I believe my, my tag is what the math, this is the name that stuck to me for many years. Um, or you just type Anton Petrov, I should come up on YouTube pretty, pretty quickly. 
Fantastic. And Joe? Uh, I guess if you search Answers with Joe on YouTube, that's where I would come up, or just my name, Joe Scott. Uh, I do have a new website that I'm trying to send people to. It's thatjoescott.com. Um, I think answerswithjoe.com will still get you there, but that Joe Scott is going to like be my central hub now. So that's where you can go. Right on. Well, make sure yeah. you subscribe to everybody. Uh, and thank you, everyone. And hopefully we'll do this again next year. Maybe I'll have different co-hosts to run. I can uh, sort of torture other people. Spread the, the angst. Yeah, spread the angst yeah. around with these choices. But it was super fun. Thanks, guys. And yeah, thanks uh, keep communicating science. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Hi, producer Anton here. If you enjoyed this video, also check out our huge ultimate guide to all the discoveries James Webb did in its first year. I'll leave a link in the corner and in the show notes. And if you're new to the channel, I'm sure you'll like our weekly Space Bites. Every Friday, we'll bring you all the most important space news. Fraser also does space-related Q&As. We've got like a huge playlist on the channel with over 220 episodes, something like that. We have lots of great interviews with researchers and scientists, like for example, uh, the one with Lee Feinberg, where he actually uncovers that the James Webb team are expecting 25 years of operations. And of course, we need to thank all our patrons whose names you see on the screen right now. They allow us to keep ads at minimum, we don't have sponsorship spots, and we even put the absolute minimum of ads that YouTube allows us to like there were no ads in the middle of this video so if you want to join this club of awesome people go to patreon.com slash universe today and finally let us know in the comments which james webb image do you think was the best and who should we invite next for a collab on youtube thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next video